Howdy cowboys and cowgirls, I'm Cowboy Jack and today I'm so excited. I don't know if you see where we're at, but we're at ESD 11, that's Emergency Service District 11 in Harris County, Texas. Well that's a lot of big words, what does that mean? That means this is where they keep all of the ambulances and all of the paramedics every day that work in ESD 11 come here to check in and get their ambulances. They said we could come in and even take a look around their brand new ambulances. You guys wanna check that out? Come on, let's go. Wow, see, I told you we're at ESD 11, Harris County ESD Emergency Services District 11 Mobile Healthcare. This is a really big ambulance. Sometimes they might call it a box or a cruiser or a lot of other different names. But anyway, we're gonna get to look all around this. It's gonna be so exciting. Whoa, hey guys, look, this is Paramedic Price. Hi. Hey, Paramedic Ishak. Hey, how are you? Wow, these guys are real life superheroes. If you had an accident or something, these would be the guys that show up to help you right on the scene. Wow, it's so great that we're here with you today. Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for coming. We're great to meet you. I'm so excited. So can you show me all about this big ambulance? Absolutely. Wow. So this is an ambulance, right? This is an ambulance. You're right. That's so cool. Hey, I see it has a lot of wheels on it, just like most cars. I see one, two, and then one up there. So that makes this three wheels per side. If you have three wheels per side, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six wheels in total. Wow. Well, back here, it looks like a regular ambulance, but up here, it looks like a regular vehicle. That's so neat. I mean, you know, Cowboy Jack drives an F-150. This. This here is an F450. That means it's a lot bigger. Can we take a look in the driver's seat? Absolutely, sir. Whoa. You guys see that? That's incredible. Wow, it looks like there's a whole lot of big important tools in there. That is so, so cool. Hey, I'm gonna sit in the driver's seat like I'm driving the ambulance. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Whoa. All right, wow, I'm sitting in this ambulance just like I'm driving it. And there's so many different buttons and things. So what do all these buttons do? So, Cowboy Jack, right over here, these are the buttons that handle the lights on the outside. And these buttons right here are actually the sirens that we have. Whoa. Um, there's something that's called a howler, and that's a special button that when we're driving along and we need to make sure somebody knows something in front of us, that they kind of see us a little more, we'll hit this and for seven seconds, it'll give a little rumble that they'll feel all the way. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then here's a air horn over to the left there. There's a little button that your foot can press that'll hit that air horn. I see that button. Can yes. I push it and Please. see what it sounds Let's like? Let's see what's going on. You guys want to see what an air horn sounds like? This is going to be a lot of fun. Whoa! That was really loud. That's crazy. But that's an important tool of an ambulance because a lot of times people don't know that an ambulance is coming up behind them and they need to move out of the way so they can get where they're going quickly. So you use the air horn as one of those tools. That's it. You want to go ahead and turn our lights on? Absolutely. So which button do I so push? So we're going to hit the emergency master button first. There we go. Whoa. Guys, look at the lights on the outside. That is so neat. And there's a whole lot of lights and we're gonna get to look at all of them in just a minute. Wow. That's right. Uh, now we can hit, do you wanna hear what the sirens sound like? Of course we wanna hear what the siren sounds like. Okay, go ahead and hit one and two. At the same time? At the same time. All right, here goes siren one and two. Whoa. There you go. All right, that was so cool. I'm so glad we got to look around inside here. It's a big, important job driving an ambulance. I bet you have to keep your head on a swivel all the time. You have to be really careful, right? Because what we're doing tends to kind of interrupt people or it kind of uh, can scare them if they're not paying a lot of attention. Yeah. So we have to pay attention to ourselves and we have to pay attention to everyone else around us. So you're right, we have to really focus on how we're driving and how everyone else is driving around us. Cowboys and cowgirls driving is already kind of a scary job. There's a lot of things you have to take account for. But when you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry so you can address an emergency, it's an even more important job. I'm so glad you guys have these amazing tools at your disposal. This is great. Thank you. All right. 
Boy, that was exciting. I've never been inside an ambulance before. And look at all these amazing lights. Here we've got, we've got all kinds of colors. I can't even keep it straight. We've got white lights, we've got red lights. There's blue lights up there. This is so cool. So is this that air horn? That is part of the air horn. I'm sorry, the air horn's on the bottom. Oh, That's part of the that. siren right there. There's the air horn. Yeah, it'd have to be really big. It made a big, big noise. Wow. This ambulance is so neat. There's so many things on it. Wow, even more lights on this side. Guys, you see what that is right there? One of my personal favorites, the great state of Texas. Wow, okay, you see this sticker right here? It looks backwards, but that's so the driver can see it in his mirrors. It's, we're gonna read it backwards. It says, caution, vehicle height, 10 feet, four inches. Now, why would it be important for the driver to know how tall a vehicle is? Well, a lot of times there's underpasses and you might have to go underneath a railroad bridge or some other things. So you wanna make sure that it's at least 10 feet, probably 10 feet, eight inches to go under safely. All right, there's all these different compartments. Hey, can we see what it looks like inside? Of course. So wow. this has our CPR equipment here. Uh, there's some additional uh, equipment on the top shelf. And this is a hybrid ambulance, so we do have a couple of batteries to serve as backup to our power system. Wow, so that's good. So the ambulance doesn't use as much gas. That's correct. Does this ambulance run on gasoline or diesel? Uh, this ambulance runs on gas as well as a battery system. This is such a huge vehicle and it runs on gas and it's a hybrid. So that means it's very efficient. That's so cool. So you said this is a CPR device. What is CPR? CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Can you hear that? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Say that five times fast. I'm just kidding, you can't. That's a really big word. What does CPR mean? So CPR is something that we performed uh, manually for years, which is when somebody's heart stops, we push on their chest to get their heart working again. Okay, but this machine does that work for you. That's correct. That's so cool. Boy, isn't technology great? Wow, that's a really cool compartment. We've got even more lights. And just like every vehicle, it's got an exhaust pipe down here. Wow. So there's a lot of information on an ambulance. You have everything from the district that it comes from, what it is, the website that you could find out about it. But then you also have important information like call 911 for an emergency. That's important. If you ever have a bad emergency, you need to remember to call 911. You never want to call them unless it's really, really bad. And if you call them by accident, don't just hang up the phone. You stay on and say, I'm sorry, I called by accident. So that way they know there's not an emergency and they don't rush over to try and help you when there's nothing to help. All right, well, can we see the inside of an ambulance? All right, so we're gonna see some of the tools they use inside the ambulance. I mean, there's a lot of things that happen when an ambulance comes to a scene. They have a lot of a big, important job to do, and we're gonna get to see how they do that. So we're gonna open up the back, and when we do, you're gonna see this ambulance will drop down. You guys see that? Wow, that was really neat. I mean, before he opened the doors, it was up here, and then as soon as he opened the doors, it lowered down. What's the point of that? So that actually keeps it safe. This stretcher goes in and out, and the wheels will touch down. This just brings it closer to the ground so that people are safer when they're going in the ambulance and coming out of the ambulance. Okay, that's really cool. So whenever you need to get up in there, it's lower to the ground. It's kind of like, right now we've got a low rider ambulance. That's really cool. That's it. Now, we'll pull the stretcher out. Wow, that looks like it's on some kind of device. It is. So this is called an auto lift, and this is our stretcher right here. So it goes, this is a stretcher. This is wow. a stretcher, sir. Now, are you ready to see how this comes out? Sir, paramedic check. Oh my goodness, this is like all automated. There's so many electronic parts to it. That's really great. It is. It actually helps out a great deal for anybody who may be really tall or a little bit heavy. Huh? This is perfect for them. I think Cowboy Jack checks both of those boxes. <laughs> well, you know what? Why don't we really check Cowboy Jack? You got, what do you mean? How about 
you lay on our stretcher. Let us go ahead and put you on the stretcher and show you what it looks like in the back. Well, that would be really cool. Because guys, I mean, a stretcher can be kind of a scary thing, but we're gonna see that it's really not that scary. I'm gonna get on here just like you would if you had some kind of emergency. And we're gonna see what all this is all about. Okay. So what do I do, just lay on there? Yeah, just have come over here, turn over, have a seat. All Let's right. Keep those legs up. All right, are we're you comfortable? Wow, well, you know what? This actually feels pretty nice. Hey guys, just, just give me one minute. Give me one minute, I'm sure. just gonna. There you go. <laughs> okay, all right, not a good time for a nap. We're gonna go ahead and learn about this stretcher, okay? <laughs> okay, so here's a seat belt, sir. A seat this belt. is gonna come across, and okay. we're going to... Look at that, there's a buckle right here. Is this that's the right it. one? That's the right one. Huh. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna kind of tighten this up right here so okay. that we don't, uh, we don't let you move off the stretcher while we're moving. Well, that is so cool. I mean, I feel all buckled in. That, yes, sir. There's one more. One more. It's kind of like being in a race car. Oh, that is like a race car. I've never got to be in a race car before, but this is really neat. Well, there we go. Now you're nice and secure. We're going to pull up that other side. And we're going to let you into the back of the ambulance. Okay, sir. Whoa. See, this is what would happen if you were in an emergency situation. They might put you in this stretcher, or if you're a little bit smaller, they have a special chair for little guys. But it's all basically the same concept. You're strapped in and secure so they can move you. That's it. Okay. Okay. We're going to go for we're a little go. ride up. <laughs> wow, that's really neat. Yes, sir. All right. Go up a little more. That's perfect. Whoa! I mean, this is almost like a roller coaster. So we have another robot friend that works with us. It's called the Auto Loader. It's going to raise you up and bring you inside the ambulance. A robot's going to put me inside the ambulance. That's so cool. One hand. Wow! That is so neat. So here I am inside the ambulance. This is really unique. I've never been inside an ambulance. This looks really cool. I mean, there's a lot of tools and a lot of really great things to look at. All right. Wow. So Cowboy Jack, welcome to the back of the ambulance. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So I in feel here, like you gave me the best seat in the house. You know, you do have the best seat. <laughs> That's so great. Because everything is focused on you right now. When you're in the back of the ambulance with us, we're always here focused on you. Okay. And from this point, we can sit over here. We have all of our equipment, all of the things that we can help take care of you if you're ill or if you're injured. Um, so if you happen to have been in a car accident, you know, you would be here on the stretcher and we would just be able to find the different pieces of equipment uh, to sit there and help you with whatever. I'm sorry. I feel like my head is spinning. I'm just looking all around at all of this unique gear and all these tools that you have to do your job. I don't know how you keep it all straight. Well, the good thing is this organization where we work. We have everything that has labels and everything has its purpose. So over on this side, you know, if you're sick um, and uh, you have a fever, we have specific kits and, and ways to be able to treat you for your fever over on this one. Whoa. In the middle, if you were in an accident, like a car accident, we have some things that treat the car accident. Wow. And each bin is specific to something <clears throat> that happens. It sounds like ESD-11 really has their stuff together when it comes to taking care of people in an emergency situation. They, they really do. They've spent a lot of time, they really think about this, and they find the best way to be able to help the community. Well, that's really great for the folks that live here in ESD-11. And no matter where you live, the ambulances are here to help you and take care of you the fastest way possible while they get you to a hospital if that's the thing that needs to happen. If it doesn't need to happen, they'll do everything they can to take care of you and get you where you need to go. It's really cool. Absolutely. So from here, you know, we would go ahead and take care of you. And then my partner, paramedic Ishak, would go up front and he would start driving to the hospital. All right, guys. Well, this was so neat to get to see all the tools and equipment that paramedics have at their disposal in case of an emergency. I mean, I've never been on a stretcher before, and I'm here to tell you, I'm your buddy, Cowboy Jack. There is absolutely nothing scary about this. It's actually really exciting. I mean, there's a lot of things going on, and even though you might be in pain, 
these guys that are here with you, these paramedics, their sole focus is to take care of you, make sure you're comfortable and taken care of, and that any kind of injury that you have is being addressed while you get to where you need to go. So absolutely no reason to be concerned or scared. It's whenever you're here on the stretcher, you're kind of in their control. So you need to just lay back and it's really comfortable. Just lay back, relax, and let them do their jobs because they're doing everything they can to make sure you get to feeling good as quickly as possible again. Yes, sir. Wow. So, Combo Jack, we're at the hospital, so we got to offload you now. We're going to do the same thing, just in reverse. Okay. Okay. Boy, I'm ready for the other side of this roller coaster. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, here right. I go. Wow. I mean, that's very unique because here I am hanging off of the edge and it kind of felt like maybe I would fall, but that robot has got me really protected. It sure does. And now you're nice and safe. I feel up really tall too. <laughs> Let's turn you around here. Whoa, that was really fun. Hey guys. See, like I said, they can get you in and out of the ambulance really easily and really safely with the help of that ro robotic arm there. And of course, these guys are here to make sure nothing bad would ever happen. It's so neat. All right, well, now that we're out of the ambulance, it's time to get up. Okay. So what do we do now? We're gonna go down towards the ground. Whoa. Nice and easy. Now that we're there, we're gonna unbuckle our seat belts. Okay, you want me to just take these chest straps That off? would be great, sir. Whoa. See, now I'm unstrapped and I can go ahead and get up. Wow. I mean, that was a really relaxing time. I actually feel rested now. All right, cowboys and cowgirls, let's watch them put this back up now that I'm off of it. Wow, look at that robotic arm there coming up to secure it. There's so many moving parts. Cowboy Jack, you ready to take a call with us? Absolutely, let's take a call. What does that mean? We're gonna go help somebody. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's go help somebody. All right, so this is the radio? That's really cool. Hmm. How does the radio look on my vest? <laughs> wow, this was so exciting getting to see all about the ambulance. And now we're gonna actually get to go on a call. We're just waiting to see if there's an emergency that we can respond to. <laughs> so Cabo Jack, we have these radios where our dispatchers are gonna call us when they need help uh, or someone has called for help. Wow, so that kind of looks like a cell phone, but it has this thing on it. That's correct. So. This has both capabilities. We have our radios, the traditional radios, the walkies on here, as well as uh, being able to make cell phone calls on here. Wow, that's really cool. That's a very unique piece of equipment, but a very important part of the job. So this is how dispatch calls you and tells you anywhere you need to go, wherever there's an emergency. So it tells us the information about the call, uh, what the problem may be, um, and where the problem and where the accident has taken place, as well as directions from the GPS. Wow, that's a powerful tool. That's really neat. Yep, and it will give us turn-by-turn -turn directions to wherever we're going so we can come find you very quickly. Huh. I just need to fix, hey, they're always laughing at my hair. That's not fair. Okay, I'll put my hat back on. All right. Well, wow, isn't that neat? This radio has all these tools on it. I mean, we shouldn't even call it a radio. We should call it the nerve center of an EMS. Yep. <laughs> That's so cool. So uh, they should be calling you here in a minute, and we'll find out what we have to go to. All right. Well, what do we do when we're waiting on a call? So when we're waiting on a call, we're usually training. Uh, we're reviewing all our protocols and all our procedures. We're oh. going over our equipment, make sure that it's in good working order. Wow. I, I bet that is a big important part of the job because you're constantly using your tools. But as we always say, whenever you use a tool, no matter what kind of tool it is, it's important to put it back in its right place. That way you can find it the next time, right? That's correct. That wouldn't be a whole lot of fun if your partner were to put your tools up in a different spot and then when you needed them, you couldn't find them. Yeah, and it's really nice to have them organized and in bins and labeled and all the dates are checked on all our medications to make sure that we're using top quality stuff. I didn't even think about that. You guys have to carry a lot of medications on the ambulance as well. 
So Cowboy Jack, uh, we didn't get to show you, but as you were on the stretcher, we have a hidden compartment here that has both a refrigerator and a heater that stores medications. Oh wow, I guess some medicines need to be kept cold and some need to be kept hot. That's correct. I didn't even think about some medicines needing to be kept hot. That's really unique. Wow, guys, go look at that. So this side is 89 degrees, that's our heater. This side is 45 degrees, and that's our cooler. And we have them in locked compartments to keep the medication safe and secure and at the right temperature. Wow, that is so unique. I mean, this, this is like a house. I mean, there's literally everything you could ever need right here at your disposal. And that's so important because whenever you get an emergency call, they don't know what kind of emergency it is. They don't know exactly what they're gonna be dealing with. They gotta be ready for anything. Wow, that is so cool. And I love these doors, how they open and close like that. And let's see this one more time. When we close these doors, it's gonna raise up. Whoa, see it coming up? Right now it's at the top of my boot. Here it comes. That is so cool. Wow. And I bet they do that with an airbag system. That's how lowriders do it. <laughs> hey, what's that up there? So this is one of our cameras that shows us the back of the ambulance. Oh. Uh, so when we're backing up at the hospital bays, we'll use that camera as well as a person standing outside to make sure that we come into the bay safely. Okay. And that we don't hit any objects or hit anybody that may be crossing behind us. That's important because this is a gigantic box and you can't always see where you're driving it. So they have all these cameras outside to make sure that they don't hit anything. Wait a second, guys, did you hear that? They called me. Hello, this is Cowboy Jack. Cowboy Jack, we're gonna need you to respond to an unknown problem. You're gonna need Cowboy Jack to respond? Hey Cowboy Jack, we need you to respond. I'm a paramedic guy, Shaq. Okay then, me and paramedic Ishak are on the job. All right, they need us, let's go. All right. Cowboy Jack, we need your seatbelt, sir. Okay, yes sir. Thank you. Let me buckle in. All right, I'm buckled in. Driver's seat. Okay. All right, guys, this is exciting. We're going on a call. All right, now you need to buckle in too. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is so exciting. I've never been on a call before. So Cabo Jack, this is an emergency situation. Do you know how to turn the lights on? You showed me, but I need a refresher. Okay. Which... So we're going to hit that switch there that says emergency master on it. Okay, emergency master emergency going start. on. So we should have all our lights activated. I have my seatbelt on. You have your seatbelt on. We I know do. where we're going. So here we go. All right. And you know how to activate the siren? I do. Okay, let's do it. All right, guys, well, we're headed out to our call. This is gonna be so fun. So Cowboy Jack, when we're driving, we have to make sure everybody sees us as well as hears us on the road, other drivers. So we will use our air horn as well as our sirens. And so you use these switches to interact with the public when you're driving to let them know that you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry. Yes, that's correct. That's our form of communication out to the other drivers on the road to let them know that we're coming through. Wow, that is really, really cool. I'm really glad that you have those tools to make sure everybody knows, hey, there's an ambulance coming and we're, we're trying to get to an emergency in a hurry. Yes, it does help us safely cross through a lot of high traffic areas, um, but we do have to be very careful at the intersections. Um, sometimes they're four and six lanes across. So we do have to use an extreme amount of caution. And here we are. 
All right. Well, that was so much fun. Thank you for taking me for a ride. My pleasure, Cabo Jack. Thank you for coming with us. Absolutely. So, hey, Paramedic Ishak, I keep seeing this button, and I don't know what that means. Opticom. What is that? Great question. So this is, as you said, another way that we communicate with people on the road. When this button is pressed, uh, there's a system in place in Harris County that signals the red lights up ahead for us and changes them to green so we can safely go through the intersections um, and it stops the traffic in the other directions turns those lights red. Wow so it gives you like a, a, a free uh, or a clearer path to get to where you're going in a hurry. Yes and we'll use that when we have uh, a critically sick person we'll use that to get to the hospital quicker as well as uh, get to the scene quicker. Wow that's really cool I'm so glad that you have that tool. So, hey, I'm getting a call. Okay. This is Cowboy Jack. Cowboy Jack, we show you guys on scene. Yes, sir, we are here on scene. Excellent. All right. Well, that means that's confirmation that we were arrived to our destination. So I guess we ought to just go ahead and get out. Sure. All right. Boy, thank you for showing me that. That was so fun. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right. Wow, well, pretending to be a paramedic was so much fun, but I'm glad that you guys do it. I mean, I don't actually know what I'm doing, but you guys let me pretend like I knew what I was doing so that we could show everybody at home what it's like in the day of the life of what it is you do every day. Yes, sir. So I guess I got to give you your cool tools back. Yeah, unfortunately. All right. Well, hey, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> you did a great job, though, and we want to thank you for coming. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Wasn't this so much fun? And remember, this is an, another important thing. Whenever you see somebody in uniform like this, these paramedics work really hard to keep not only you and I safe, but everyone else. And so whenever we see them, we want to make sure we tell them, thank you for doing what you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Cabo Jack. Thank you, Cabo All right. Jack. All right, guys. Well, we're going to get out of your hair, but thank you so much for showing us your awesome tools and a, your amazing job that you do every day. Thank, thank you for riding with us. us. All right. We'll see you later. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Boy, have we had an adventure today. It was so much fun getting to see all the way around the ambulance and all the tools and equipment they have for paramedics to do their jobs. I mean, I want to give a real special thank you to our friends at Harris County ESD 11. And like we learned, ESD stands for Emergency Services District. They were so nice and generous to let us come here and learn all about the tricks of the trade and what they do every day to help keep people safe and get to them in a real emergency situation. We've had a great time. So make sure if you had a fun time today to click subscribe on Cowboy Jack and that way you can come on all of our adventures because we put out an adventure every single week and you never know what we're going to do. We like to do all kinds of stuff. All right, cowboys and cowgirls. Well, until next time. Yeah!